The Nashville Predators were supposed to be rebuilding last year, and yet 97 points made the playoffs quickly dispatched, but you can argue without UC Soros there, it's difficult to win anything. I mean, they were going up against Colorado and it was, as Daryl Sutter predicted, a waste of eight days. And I believe it was actually seven. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they would have had a difficult time winning games against Colorado with UC Soros. And they had who? Connor Ingram and Big Save Dave. Yeah. Who did not make big saves. The reason Big Connor Save Ingram Dave is... Did. Ingram did. The, the reason Big Save Dave is nicknamed that... You know, it, it, Big Save Dave is named Big Save Dave because when he makes a big save, it's a surprise. <laughs> These days. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, for another I, I'm telling division. you. I'm telling you. I watched him play. Uh, 97 points last year. Jesse, what's the over-under at Sports Interaction? It has them sitting right there. 96 and a half. So are they the same team as last year? Are they any better? Are they any worse? They are one of the NHL's what are you teams. And I think I'm glad you brought that up because I think they became more of what they want to be. And which is they want to be a really difficult team to play against that is responsible at both ends of the ice. And the acquisitions they made weren't necessarily huge, but they were what they want to be. Nino Nita Ryder. Nino Nita Ryder is a fantastic signing at a fantastic number. I love that from day one for the Nashville Predators. Depth up the middle, yes, please. Uh, responsible two-way player, yes, please. Can contribute offensively, yes, please. Decent number, yes, please. Checks a lot of boxes. And I don't know how much he's got left in his career, but Ryan McDonough is a Nashville Predators-ass player. That's right. That, yeah. is, that is a perfect fit. He might have been shoehorned into some other organizations, but I think he's a perfect Fit for the Nashville Predators. Him and Borietsky uh playing on the same they're the they're the bottom pair. That's a nasty pair. No, it's I a, got him on the second line with Matthias Eckholm. Oh really? That's a great yeah. pair. Not Alex Carrier? It would be um Roman Yossi and Dante Fabro, and then Eckholm McDonough, and then uh Lazan and Carrier. Okay. That's uh, what my six are. Fabro, who should take another step this season. And a guy who was sort of on the periphery of the Calder conversation last year. I am very excited for um, sophomore Tanner Janot. Mm. Yes, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, they, they just have so many underappreciated guys. And I feel like the Predator, you know, they became too high profile for a while. Everyone knew who the Predators were. And it was an uncomfortable time. They used to be that team where no one knew who was on them. Until they showed up in the second round, and you're like, "Why are they beating my team? <laughs> this is bullshit." Uh huh. Um, and uh, I think they're getting back to that. They like for some reason, uh, a lot of them are just really underappreciated guys. Uh, no question. And maybe it's maybe it's Tolvanen's year to break out too. This is one of the guys that you know we've been talking about for years. Is this finally the time? I mean, I, I feel like this is a make or break. It's it's sort of like you know he's an NHL player without question. But is he going to be a great NHL player? This, so I think a lot of players get into trouble when they're given a title. And the title he was given was best player outside of the NHL. And the problem with the that Yarko title... The Yarko Rutu Cup. Yeah, like the, the problem with that title is it's like five or six years old. Like, detach the Rock of Triumph from Ellie Tolvanen. Like, forget all that. For, forget, you know, making him into a 50-goal scorer, a 40-goal scorer. Can you just make him the best version of Ellie Tolman? Can you make him a guy who helps you win hockey games? Um, and I think that's what they're going to do. This is Matt Duchesne, guys, the Matt Duchesne we saw last year, or was he the Matt Duchesne we saw the previous three years? Man, no one benefited from the uh, rise in scoring around the NHL more than Matt Duchesne. He is the name uh, at the top of the scorers list that sticks out the most. And I've, I know I've used fantasy hockey as a, as a barometer in, in recent videos, but he was a guy who we were on group chat, me and seven other guys was eight of us. Uh, and all of us went, Matt Duchesne mm -hmm. he had over 90 points. Mm -hmm. Who told him he was allowed? What gave him the nerve? And Ryan Johansson, who I thought like, okay, pack it up. We're done here. Like not, he can't be effective. Like he can't play hockey. Like, like his, injuries, injuries, his yeah. career might be over. And the Predators got maximum value out of both those guys. Still one of the weaker center cores in the division. 
Well, is like, that is it's that... a division with the Coyotes and Blackhawks, and there's st- and and the Predators are still one of the weaker teams. No, or is that is that <laughs> they us? are is Colorado, Dallas. Who else we got? Uh, ignore Arizona, I... St. Louis. Even Winnipeg's got better centers than they do. All right, them's fighting words. <laughs> I think I like Grand Lynn and Joe. And wild, yeah. I think I think you're stapling. Well, and Niederreiter's in there too, although he can play wing. Yeah. I think you're stapling uh, past expectations to the Preds centers, and they overachieved the way you're describing them last year. Okay. Now, can they continue that? That's my question. Yeah, it's it's. We were talking about it recently. It's so difficult with the complete explosion in scoring league wide last year. How on earth do you look at Matt Duchesne who hadn't done that? Mm -hmm. I think ever. I want to say he achieved career highs, but like he hadn't produced like a number one center for the better part of half a decade. And then all of a sudden he just goes, guess what? Guess what? I'm one of the top offensive producers in the entire NHL. Yeah. That's Uh, why I'm asking the question. Is yeah. that possible to do that again? I, I know Forsberg is. is his line mate, and anybody can score with Forsberg, but Duchesne's a player. Forsberg missed a lot of time last year, mm-hmm. and he was one of the more underrated goal scorers in the entire NHL last year. Mm-hmm. He would have been in the conversation for 50, no problem, yep. uh, had he been able yeah, to he stay missed healthy. 13 games, he still had 42 goals. And for context on Matt Duchesne, his highest goal scoring season before last year was 30 goals with the Colorado Avalanche in 15 16. And what do you have, 41, 42? And then last season, he had 43 goals in 78 games. I think the Preds have really underrated offensive depth, really underrated decor, and one of the best goalies in the league. I'm sorry, that's a contender. Yeah. Those are all the ingredients. You know, do. Do I want to throw Matt Duchesne up head to head against Nathan McKinnon? Well, no, no, but I'll throw their collective offense against most teams in this league. And because uh, Leafs fans are very overwhelming, people might not have noticed during the Michael Bunting rookie season that Tanner Janot actually led all rookie goal scoring. Yes, and wasn't nominated. 24 goals, uh, Bunting only had 20. Well, he should never be nominated. He's not a Leaf. (laughs) <laughs> you know what you're right you know so, that that's a, if you're looking for breakout candidates to just keep it up like i know he's 25 so not a true rookie in the same way bunting was but um there's another possible 25 goal season from a guy who's probably going to start on the third line so uh early season we've been singing their praises early season potential problem for them who was great for them in the playoffs in place of big save dave connor, connor ingram. ingram connor ingram and who's going to be the backup this year? Not Connor Ingram. Kevin Lankin. Why? I don't know. Where's Kevin, Ingram? I'm pretty sure he's going to get put on waivers, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's going to get claimed, and I don't know why they're doing that. That doesn't make any sense uh, to I me. don't underestimate David Poyle. He's been doing this really well for a real long time. Well, you never know. Maybe it'll end up being Saros, Ingram, and Lankin is the one who's waived. Right. Um, I'm just going by what Cap Friendly says, but... Uh, if they did it the other way around, that would be confusing. So you see, it sounds like the two of you are huge fans of the Preds. Huge. I think they have a very good team. I don't have them actually very high in my standings here, but I think the team is very good and they could surprise a lot. And we've spent a lot of this conversation not talking about UC Saros, who's the strongest player Easily. on their team, yeah. who can be the biggest game changer for the National Predators. I have them sitting at five in the division, but if UC Saros Go actually, I've I know I've been sitting at four. Sorry, four in the division. And if UC Soros has another Vezina caliber season, they could catapult them to the top two, three. Well, it's interesting you say that because by Philip Forsberg's mustache, I have the Predators at number three in my division. There you go. I say the Predators. So you're also high on them. I, I thought you were on down on the I'm Preds. I'm down on them. I have to listen. <laughs> I, my, my job is to be a little contrary. I have to push the contrary view, but I'm actually a big fan, and I think it starts and ends with UC Soros. You, you yeah. have such an unbelievable goaltender there. If they could find per, perhaps a little more depth on the third and fourth lines throughout the year, you tinker, you find. I think they've got some cap space as well. Man, I, I look at this Preds team, and I'm you know last year I was not a fan at all. But I think they found out whatever they needed to find out. And I thought they were going to rebuild. They're not. They're third in my division. Mm-hmm. Love the offense. Love the defense. Love the goaltending. What's not to like second? 
in the central. Nice. Wow. I don't hate that. They could have been anywhere in that two, three. And four. Jesse, where do you have them? Just I have them at. I have them at four. You have them at four. Yeah. Wow. Holy smokes. Three different scores. That's very interesting. Okay. Well, that will bring us to, I believe, St. Louis next. And I'm fascinated. 